Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com. Today I want to talk to you about how focusing on what you want to manifest is not about fear or panic. This is a very common issue people have in manifesting. When they get into the law of attraction, they hear about focus and that they need to focus on the things that they desire. But instead of focusing on the goodness of God, and the blessings of God, and being appreciative of what they already have, being grateful, walking in thanksgiving, Instead, it becomes like a panicked, almost manic focus on this thing that they want. But some people may think, well, that sounds all right. But see, the problem is it is a focus on the lack of the thing. Because if you had something, if you believe that you received when you prayed, as Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24, you wouldn't act panicked, rushed, or fretful, or almost manic about this thing that you want because you have it. You would operate and behave and feel a completely different way if you believe that you received when you prayed. So the plain indication that you didn't believe that you received when you prayed is the fact that your focus is panicked and, and fretful and, and like, well, if I say enough affirmations then I'm going to bring about the result I want. If I do enough visualization, if I read enough scripture, if I do enough prayer, whatever it may be that you think is going to get the end result, you don't have to convince God. You don't have to, to do enough things to get God's grace in your favor, God's grace working for you. He's already freely given you all things richly to enjoy. He already blesses you abundantly. He already so loved the world that he gives only begotten Son. He already sent Jesus so that you might have life in that more abundantly. He's not withholding any good thing from you, my friend. So when you're acting that way, when you're getting panicked about it, or, well, I gotta do these affirmations, or, or getting yourself into this low vibrational state, trying to do the right thing, but making it into a chore, making it into something that's no longer enjoyable, no longer pleasurable, you're not, getting the joy of the Lord in your life, you're instead wrecking yourself and making yourself all panicked over it. That's not going to attract what you want. And the worst case scenario that most people experience in this situation is that they actually get less of the thing they want, more of the things they don't want, because the only thing they can attract is more of that lack, more of that fretful energy, more of that fretful, desperate, pleading vibrational state that they're operating in and you never attract the goodness of God in your life in that kind of a state you could even argue well what about if you repent and you're you're really overjoyed and you're crying and repenting of your sins and well that's still you don't just stay in that state you move on to faith and gratitude and gratefulness and a new heart and a clean pure new man within you you don't just keep on fretting and panicking and repenting over the same things over and over and over again. You would never do that. Think of that. If that's a good way of approaching it, many people can understand that when they go to God for forgiveness. They believe that they've received forgiveness right here and now. Well, do that same thing. Take that same approach, that same boldness of faith, truly believing God, that He is your Heavenly Father. He is good and that the goodness of God brings you to repentance, and the goodness of God is freely flowing in your life, and the grace of God is freely flowing in your life. Not just for the things of morality and living above sin and living in purity and holiness, but for your day-to-day -day life as well, your physical needs. He didn't put you here so you can suffer and be miserable and do without and then just die. That's not what life is. That's never what you were created to be. Look at the very beginning in the garden. It was a place of abundance. Man had a job. He had work to do. But it wasn't by the sweat of his brow and toil and fretting and all this stuff. It was peaceful. It was joyful. It was walking with the Lord in the cool of the day. It was goodness and a fullness of the blessings of God. That's what he wants for you now. And you can freely receive that. But you have to be in a position to where you, right here and now, whatever position you're in, are grateful.
And from that grateful heart, you believe that you've received those things you prayed for. You walk in the faith of having those things already by faith, knowing that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Knowing that in this physical world, maybe it's not here right now, but you'll have whatsoever you say. And that's important. Make sure that what you're saying is those things that further align with the belief that you have received those things already. You can't talk doubt. You can't talk lack. You can't talk not enough. And then on the other hand, talk about, well, you know, I believe in God for the abundance and blessings and all these things because you really don't. Not if you're talking the curse, not if you're talking the doubt, not if you're talking the unbelief. And this can seem subtle at times when you're trying to believe and focus on the goodness of God and focus on the thing you want, but instead you get sidetracked focusing on the lack of the thing that you want, that you don't have it, that you got to do all these things to get it to come to pass. That's never been what visualization or affirmations or prayer or any of these things are about. They're not about convincing God. There's an old saying that, if you say a thousand affirmations, the first affirmation was for God, the other 999 are for you. God doesn't need convincing. I would say even with that, that saying, even the first affirmation is not even for God. He doesn't need it. He knows before you speak what you want. He's given you the power and the faith of God to operate by faith, not by sight, in this life and to receive those things that you want, to be an imitator of God, as a dear child following him, being like him, calling those things that be not as though they were, decreeing a thing and seeing it be established unto you and having the light of God's favor shine upon your path. My friend, he's given you great power. If you'll believe, don't get sidetracked into this doubt and unbelief of doing things because you think it's not gonna really happen. Because you think, well, I didn't do my 50 affirmations today, so I'm not gonna get that thing I wanted. Didn't you already believe you received? The affirmations are for you. They're building you up. They're edifying you in the most holy faith. They're not to convince God. They're not a magical incantation to make something happen. They are about you renewing your mind each and every day, glorifying God in your gratitude for the thing that you've already believed for and you believe that you received it and you, my friend, will have it. So don't let another day go by when you get into doing things, these affirmations and visualization, all these things that you should be doing, prayer, all these things that you should be doing, fasting, these are all good things. But they were never intended as a way of you beating yourself up or doing more work in order to convince God of something. He's already convinced. He's already on your side. If anything, before you worry about material things in this life, one of the most important things you can convince yourself of and get yourself fully confident in is that God is on your side, that God so loved the world, that God so loves you, that God is love. When you know that, you can know that from a grateful, pure heart. My friend, manifesting material things comes easily because you're no longer believing that I got to convince God or I got to do a thousand affirmations because then maybe one of those or if I do enough of them or make it hard enough on myself that I'm going to convince God to give me this thing. He doesn't need convincing. He's already convinced. It's just up to you to receive. So yes, do affirmations, do visualization, do all these things that build you up and edify you in the faith. But don't do them to try to convince God. Don't do them because you think without them you're not going to get the manifestation. These th those things are to edify you in the faith. And they're good. And they will help you manifest more. But God's already on your side. You don't need to convince him. You don't need to trick him or whatever you think may happen. He's already for you. My friends, God is love. He already is on your side. He freely gives you all things richly to enjoy. His goodness is abundantly available in your life. It's just up to you to receive. So I'm asking you today to receive. And I'm praying that you will receive, that you'll hear this. Maybe listen to this a couple times. Watch this video a few times and really get it deep down into your heart and allow the Spirit to work on you. And believe from a pure heart that God is love, that God loves you. He's on your side. He's for you. And you will receive whatsoever you desire. 
whatsoever you believe for. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.